Question 2, we're looking at atoms and photons. A says, state what a photon is and describe how it can be produced by electrons within an atom. So the first part, what is a photon? A um, photon is a, uh, a wave packet or a uh, discrete um, uh, amount or particle of light. So, yeah, that's a tricky one, but um, it's a light particle if you want to keep just very, very simple. Um, and it's produced by electrons within an atom when electrons drop down energy levels and photons of light are given off. Question, or I was going to say question two, but uh, anyway, it's B. X-rays are used to take photographs of bones inside the body. X-ray photons... So remember, photons are not just visible light. X-rays are not visible to the human eye, but they still produce photons because they're electromagnetic radiation. X-ray photons, anyway, typically have frequencies in the range of 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 19 hertz. Uh, an X-ray photon has an energy of 191 electron volts. Calculate the frequency of the photon. So uh, we've, we've given the, been given the energy. Um, we know Planck's constant and we can calculate the frequency this way, so F equals E over H. The only tricky part is to convert this 191 electron volts into um, <coughs> excuse me, into joules, into an energy measurement in terms of joules. So the amount of uh, joules will be equal to um, the, uh, the, the charge on an electron times by the value on electron volts of energy. Because okay, um, if you remember the formula for voltage is energy per charge. So to find the energy you have to multiply the voltage by the charge. Uh, in this case the charge is the charge on an electron um, and the energy uh, and the voltage is the electron volts. Because remember our electron volt reading is the um, the energy gained by an electron that's accelerated to one volt of potential energy. So that we're, we're rearranging. Electron volt is really a voltage measurement, but it's for one um, electron. Anyway, we're still subject to this formula, and we can apply it uh, down here. So anyway, um, what, how are we going to do that? Uh, charge on electrons, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Coulombs and the electron volt uh, energy is given up there, so we just multiply the two together um, and then we substitute that value into here, divide by Planck's constant, um, which is what is it, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, and we should get a frequency of 4.61 times by 10 to the 16 hertz. Fantastic. When X-ray photons hit calcium, electrons are released. C. The frequency of a photon um, will have to be more than the threshold frequency if an electron is to be released. Discuss the statement in terms of underlying physics principles. Okay. Um, so really, this is getting to the heart of the photoelectric effect, in that um, you have photons of light, um, striking uh, the surface of a metal and uh, the atoms in that surface have electrons around them. The photons are uh, hitting the electrons, so if we zoom into that um, like you know, ridiculously amount to find the energy levels um, we can see whoops, that um, that photon of light has to hit an electron to give it energy to raise it up the levels. It has to give it enough energy to get free um, if an electron is to be released. So there is a minimum amount of energy required for that um, electron to jump up and the light has to have at least that amount. If it's got uh, that amount, which we call the work function, then it will uh, jump out. If it doesn't have enough, um, it won't jump out. The only thing remaining <coughs> excuse me, to discuss um, is that the energy of the incident light 
has to be enough um, to to make it uh, to uh, for it to jump out. So higher frequencies of light have more energy per photon, which means more energy to release the electrons. D. We have X-rays of a frequency 1.53 times 10 to the minus 16, or 10 to the positive 16 hertz. Uh, cause the emission of electrons from a material with a minimum maximum maximum kinetic energy of 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Calculate the frequency, the threshold frequency, for the release of electrons from the material. Okay, so uh, frequency we know, uh, which is at 1.53 times 10 to the 16. We have uh, a maximum um, kinetic energy of the electrons. Um, of uh, what was it? Let's just write there. Okay, we don't. It's two point one eight times ten to the minus eight. It's right there, um, which is good. And uh, the I'm trying to find the threshold frequency. Um, and what else? I think that's all that we need. So we've got this formula, um, which looks at the kinetic energy of released electrons being equal to um, the energy of the light that strikes them uh, minus the work function which is the amount of energy required to release it um, so uh, we know H as well I should say because that's um, the Planck's constant so we're pretty much just rearranging this equation substituting our numbers in V equals kinetic energy minus HF um, and then we're going to end up with a th where are we the the threshold frequency of um, sorry this is not the threshold frequency this is the threshold energy um, of uh, what is it going to be seven point nine six times ten to the minus eighteen. Uh, joules of energy and what we have to do um, to find the threshold frequency because remember this is an energy measurement um, is to take this this value phi and we have to divide it by Planck's constant so we're going all the way back up to just the E equals HF but it's not kinetic energy this time and we divide both sides by Planck's constant and we can find because we've got the energy divide by Planck's constant That'll find us the frequency. When you do that, your frequency works out to be 1.2 times by 10 to the 16 hertz. Okay, E. <coughs> Explain why if a photon uh, causes an electron to jump to a higher energy level, the exact energy of the photon is critical. But if it is used to release an electron for the atom, it is only the minimum energy of the photon that is critical. Okay, well we've got two situations. Um, we've got where it's jumping from one energy level to another. It's an electron. So uh, in this situation, the energy of the photon has to be equal to the energy difference between the two levels. Okay, in the second case, we're not just trying to jump it up here, we're trying to release it. So the energy of the photon just has to be greater than that. So if, if we write it like this, so energy of the photon has to be greater than uh, delta E in this case. And in this one, the energy of the photon um, has to be equal to delta E. So can you see that, um, uh, yeah, for the for the second case where it's releasing the electron, <coughs> it's only a minimum value to, to clear that level. Whereas in this case on the left, you have to get it exactly bang on for it to sit on top of there. So let's just read the question again and make sure we've answered it. Explain why if a photon causes an electron to jump to a higher energy level, the exact energy of the photon is critical. Yes, we've done that because it has to sit on that level. If it's got more, it'll pass it and escape. If it's got less, it just won't won't take it. It'll drop back down to the same level. Um, but if it is used to release an electron from the atom, it is only the minimum energy of the photon 
that is critical. There we go. So there's the minimum, and it jumps clear. Um, I think that's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll just have a quick browse of the solutions and make sure I haven't missed any details. Okay, one minor point is that on the right hand side in this case, when you're releasing your uh, electron, the the surplus uh, energy gets converted to kinetic energy in the electron, and that can have any kinetic energy value. Um, so it doesn't have specific discrete amounts like it does with uh, with the energy levels.